Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a use case for our integration customers with Turbo 360. We're in the Business Activity Monitor module, and we're going to take a look at a feature we've added to help with centralized error codes. So here I'm in the Azure portal. Um, I've got three different logic apps we're going to look at in different videos, and this one's about the exception code lookup. So we're using the BAM push model, and we've got um, in the logic app here, we've got some shapes such as the start transaction shape here, which is the one we um, trigger a process in Table 360. Now, the one, the shape I'm looking at in particular is this error shape. And what you can see here is, in this case, the logic app gets an error, so we're going to um, push a checkpoint to Table 360 to update the transaction and we're going to see that this got an error and the key bit I'd like you to look at is in Table 360 you can supply a few different things so the first one we're going to look at is this exception code and the other videos we're going to look at the exception message and the message body so here the exception code might be a case where as a user you've you've got you know, three or four different um, exception codes that you commonly use in your system, in your integration, and you can sort of send a code to Table 360 to say this is the error that it is. Now, if I jump over to the Table 360 portal here, so I've got my BAM Central Demos exception over here. So I've got some messages that have come in, and you can see these are the transactions running through the grid here, and I'm looking at this error code lookup. Now, in the shape for completed, you can see that's shown as red, indicating we've got a problem here. So if I click on this shape, so we can see here on the screen what's happened is we sent this little message here, or this error code, to Turbo360. But we've got an additional info message that's been looked up, so I'm going to just change the change the um, bit here. So this little error message here where it says this is a common error message match an exception code XYZ. That's a custom message that isn't in my logic app at all. That's actually held in Table 360 where we do a lookup from the error code to find some additional context you'd like to present to the user. So in Table 360 where this gets stored is over in the central settings here we've got these custom exceptions so what you can do is you can create um, a type of exception here so i've got my exception code i've got my exception message or my message body so these are the, the three different ways you can um, store a message that we'll look up so in this case i'm using exception code so you can see here I've got one where I've said, um, if we have this message or this value for the exception code, we're going to look up this text over here to display to the user. So I can build up a centralized list here. So if you notice, I've got one where I've got the exception message and one where I'm looking at the message body. So this is really just if the, if the value matches. Now, it, it would be, um, it's not an equals, it's a contains type um, lookup. So if the message body contains that text, it'll look it up. Now, what this looks like in Turbo 360, then, if we go back to here, I've got my tracking view. So we looked at the error code. If we look at the message body, so here I can click on the, um, the complete shape again. And if I look at the details here, we can see we've got the, the message body that I've shown, which is my error message from my API management call. And because that message included that text I've underlined, we also display that message to the user. So this is where we could put some guidance in. I imagine a scenario where the API returns specific error messages. And you might say, oh, this, you know, you've got an error message that says my rail car doesn't exist in CRM. You can put some guidance for what you want the user to do. So you might say, go and contact the CRM team or the business team, create the rail car, then resubmit it. Or you might do things like um, 
you know, you might see this is a really um, technical error contact the support team. So we're looking to get that additional guidance. So that's where it would appear for the message body. And then for the um, for the error, the exception message lookup, it's again, it's just a slightly different place. So here I've got an exception message body that contains that text and we're displaying that additional context here. Now, if I think back to my logic app, so there's the, so there's three different flavors of where this this comes into play. So that was the exception code lookup. We've also got the um, exception message body. So here, go down to the bottom. So you can see here we're really looking at this field here. So I've got some value. That I sent to Table 360, so that could come from some kind of lookup, hard coded, a variable in your in your workflow. You you can send whatever value you like. Now the key difference is this exception message is it's not meant to be a huge message. It's just meant to be a, a sort of fairly arbitrary message. You know, a few hundred characters, that kind of thing of what the error is. If you want to send a really big, complicated message. That's the next logic app we're going to look at where we'd use the message body instead to, to pull the um, error matching from. So if we have a look, um, I've looked at the message body lookup. So this one, again, we're in this checkpoint shape and this time we're just taking the value from the message body. You'll notice if you look down at the bottom, I haven't even got those error properties in there. So there's three different ways you can use this depending on whether you prefer the message body the exception code or the exception message regardless of which one you choose for any given logic app you can map in table 360 to the common exceptions that you would have and then you could have the lookup like here which will show you um it'll show you the detail we showed before where we've got that extra context to help the users see what's going on so as you can see here this one's the message body we can, uh, down here, we can just give that context to the user to say, here's what you should do when you see this error. Um, we'll be doing a bit more with this feature in an upcoming release, adding some more flexible options to it. But at the minute, this centralized error log, and we think will be a really good way for users at runtime, once your logic app's deployed, to be able to give more context to help that self-service use case for business users and support users. Thank you for listening to today's video. We hope you have a great week.